Well, hello, hello there again. Short talk in the trailer with you know who. An old guy. That would be me. Welcome to a Tuesday. Boy, what a day. Ugh. Time to take those off. Oh boy. Long day. Just got in. Oh gosh. Oh. Oh, there we have it. So just made it back home and uh boy, that was a long day. So I just thought I'd kind of give you a little uh, you know, blow by blow on uh what we're doing out there, uh, Monday and Tuesday th this week so far, we went over to a place and uh, it's a call center. And the uh, gas uh, meter is like wildly undersized. <laughs> They've got like close to 2 million BTU demand on this building with a whole bunch of HVAC units on the rooftop. And uh, they had a domestic meter on this all these years. What? And so a domestic meter, I think it'll push out maybe 500K. I don't know. You might be able to squeeze 600k out of it, but not 2 million. And uh, so, basically, their HVAC units have been starved for fuel, not really working right. So the city has uh, been authorized by someone to uh, come on in and set what's called a rotary meter, which is a commercial meter, which should have been there in the first place 20 years ago. <laughs> They've been running this building like this forever. And uh, so anyway, we up and down the roof, up and down the roof. And it's, it's a pretty tall roof, too. We had to use a great big old extension to get up there. And uh, so basically what we did was uh, went through and, and we reblocked the whole thing. I couldn't believe how bad this system looked up there. It was just like, man, who put this together? Ugh. And uh, so we changed out this, the faulty gas cocks. We changed out the gas flexes, which were too small. We... Uh, Went through and uh, got the whole thing supported and uh, tested, and, and the test came out good. I, I went in early today on the way into work to see what that thing was doing, and it had only dropped 3 PSI, I mean 3 pounds, overnight. I went from 14.2 down to about, uh, it was a strong 11, it was like 11.6 or 11.8 when I got there at, uh, you know, 7, whatever it was, 7.30, and, and that was before the sun came onto it. So by the time we got back, you know, with the work truck, it was, you know, closer to 8.30. It had already risen a pound, so it told me, hey, man, we're golden. We, we are covered. Well, that's not the end of the story. So what happened was a little bit crazy, but uh, I went in yesterday thinking, well, sure, I can set up a bypass for a commercial meter, but we couldn't get the city to come in yesterday because, well, it was a Martin Luther King Day, and the city had the day off. So those guys finally showed up this morning uh, they were i was told to be there between 8 30 and 9 that's when they were going to show i called at 10 45 down to the office and said i haven't seen these guys oh they'll be there in a little while sure, sure enough they finally showed up so they they gave me a little uh keen insight about what i needed to do i said to tear apart all that two inch manifold stuff down low and rebuild it and uh so we finally got that stinker put in and then talked to the boss and he says well we still need to hook them guys back up to that sorry little meter because we haven't been approved we don't have a permit <laughs> we don't know when they're putting in the meter so we got to get them heat again okay so meanwhile <laughs> starting about last uh saturday the day i blew a hole in my window i noticed this uh toothache going on down here oh gosh and it kept getting a little weirder weirder well monday i didn't even notice it so i said ah shake it off forget about it well after work yesterday, I had me a meal. Went down to Arby's. They got a two for two sandwiches for seven bucks deal. I thought, no, I'll get some of that. That was a mistake. <laughs> I ate that thing and I could not get that tooth to quit yelling at me all night long. And I finally got it to kind of dull down enough so I could go to sleep. And, uh, you know, aspirins and, and kept swishing it out with uh, peroxide and stuff. And uh, so, anyway, went to the. Uh, dentist guy today and i knew he was going to do this he says hey look you're going to have to go on a amoxicillin that's a new one on me i don't remember that name and so i'm on amoxicillin i had to go and get me a, a, a script and all that stuff and just left the uh the little walgreens uh oh 25 minutes ago because it, it's like six miles from here where i where i placed the order because that's where we were working on that end of town anyway more information than you needed uh, so anyway, finally got some uh, this uh, antibiotic junk in me, and I'm hoping uh, 
that it'll kick in pretty quick because uh, golly that, that thing was ugh, that that lower jaw down there and you just put a little pressure on that tooth like clench your jaw a little bit I how you doing it's like whoa <laughs> so we're finally caught up with where we should have been and it only took us about an extra 45 minutes because I I had to take off and go to the dentist and Marty had to go back and get more parts and you know yada yada but anyway it all sort of worked out and then it turns out that Marty at the end of the day needed a ride because his wife went to the hospital because she has headaches these uh, migraines I've heard from um, women in the past and I don't know if men ever get migraines the only people I've ever heard complaining about them are women and I really don't know and maybe you do if you've had them just how bad of a pain is this and I guess it's just about ready to knock you out so she went into the hospital to the emergency room <laughs> sat there for three and a half hours in the emergency room and I mean when you look at the parking lot there's seven cars out here <laughs> so maybe they don't have any doctors I don't know but at any rate he's going his way I'm going my way and it's the end of a long long day so while I was at Walgreens I got a good deal on these guys and uh so I said well 11 bucks for a 12 pack hmm okay let's do it so that's less than a dollar a beer and uh Gonna have a couple of beers here tonight, see if I can kind of knock the edge off that tooth thing without, you know, knocking any teeth out. And I just wanted to talk a little bit today about uh, how things are going. I heard uh, that the um, the candidacy of Vivek Ramaswamy has been uh, put on hold. He came in, I believe it was fourth or fifth or sixth or something like that in Iowa with, with like 7% of the vote or something. Or I guess it's called caucusing. And, uh, well, 7% is not bad for a guy who's, I mean, he's never done politics. But uh, in my opinion, I mean, you listen to this boy, he's got a lot between his ears. He could have been an excellent, excellent candidate. And I still think he would be an excellent candidate as a VP. But he wasn't interested in that. He wanted to be the president. So he, he may be just gone. I don't know. But anyway, I think it's too bad that the way the system works in the uh, Jewess of A is that the people who actually do have excellence and actually do have morals and actually do have some understanding of history they're pushed out of the race and all the hacks and knuckleheads and bomb throwers and, and you know the uh, Nikki Haley's of this world uh, they're they're just still in it and uh, so you know it, it, the whole thing's corrupt but anyway of course we knew that going in corruption because I mean you want to write corruption down big 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 starts with a B ends with an N and starts with uh, you know who at the top old sleepy who so the thing is is that I I don't know what's going to happen in in 2024 but it, to, me, to my mind it's it's not a good it's not a good thing that the sharpest brightest candidate in the race except for possibly Robert Kennedy and and he's a Democrat and he he and I are not, not really going to agree on everything but at least he's got integrity as a human being unlike some we could think of who are serial felons and run a crime syndicate in their own household. Hmm. I can think of several on the mm -mm other side who are into that. And so at any rate, when we think about the, uh, the future of America and the future of the Jewess of A, I think it's important for us to be able to separate ourselves as uh, Christian believers. Uh, an old guy might say something like this. Hey, let's ask an old guy. Hey, old guy, what do you think? And I think what's going to happen is, is that at some point, the United States of America, if, if, it, if it keeps going downhill and down this toilet like, it, like it's doing right now, being run by these criminals and psychopaths, uh, we're going to end up, first of all, I won't be able to say this on the worldwide interweb, because uh, they're, they're bringing on new harsh, uh, what would you call it, <clears throat> standards of what they will approve, whoever they are. And the only problem is they will never tell you what those standards are. They simply say it violates our standards. But your standards suck. <laughs> so what's going to happen is, uh, you know, people are going to keep looking for a, a open and real discussion, not media talking heads, those yap, yap, yap liars who've been bought and sold like a bunch of two-bit, you know, what. And uh, actually, that's an insult to 
prostitutes everywhere. I'm sorry, girls I, and boys, sorry to compare you with politicians. That was unfair of me. That was mean, because you would never stoop, never, to the levels of murder, mayhem, and profiteering that some are known to do. And they're doing it right now, by the way. So, the United States is beginning to tip. Uh, the empire is getting awfully wobbly, and, and as far as I can tell, and, and as I've said before, I believe we've been sold down the river. I don't think the Republic of the United States of America, we're, I don't think we're going into any kind of revival zone uh, of the good old days of constitutionality and law, uh, practice of law and etc. according to the Constitution as it was written, not as you intend to interpret it, <clears throat> Mr. and Mrs. Weirdo. So, the situation is getting real, real sketchy, and, and in 2024, something's going to go boom, crunch, because there are powers uh, uh, that be who want no part of you-know-who, DJT, uh, on board again. Now, Trump's okay with me. I mean, he's not the greatest thing since cheese whiz, and he's not all that bright, but he, he's a good guy, and he's a power dude. He knows how to wield power. And he knows how to get his way, and he knows how to get things done, which is, shall we say, unlike most of the political party's mm, inhabitants. So, he can't go in, not anymore, because the powers that be, they're, it's getting too late for them. Their plans are getting real near the raggedy end, because they want to have all this junk in place for a, essentially a worldwide hegemony. Uh out of where, I don't know, Brussels or somewhere, and and what authored, authorized the WHO as a imperial edict maker for all nations on planet Earth. This is coming down. It's going to happen unless people rise up, and they're not rising up. They're not paying attention. I'm not. I'm not doing anything to halt this treaty in May. And if the treaty goes through in May, well, you can kiss a goodbye to the old U.S. of A. We've got something else on our hands after that. And it ain't the country, of home, home of the free and uh, land of the brave or anything, anything like that. It's going to be the uh, home of the uh, uh, brainwashed and coward. And so I, I just want to say, you know, maybe as, as time goes on, it's going to be harder and harder to find people to listen to, old guys or young, uh, women or, or girls or boys or anybody who isn't towing the party line. Have you, have you heard yet about the, uh, I think I mentioned this, the pangolin thing over there in, in China? These, these crooked, evil, twisted psychopaths in China have cooked up a new variety that they think may be 20 times more deadly than, you know what, CV-19. Why did you guys make that? Why did you guys build that? Why did you guys go to the trouble of doing the research to produce that? Who wins? Who's paying for it? Well, it looks to me like 2024 is going to be kind of a rehash of 20, you know what, the year all the uh, proverbial poop hit the fan, because it's an election year, and once this new variety, it's, it's uncanny how similar this is to 2020 in terms of the date, in times of the month and the year, uh, here we are mid-January, you watch, by the end of January, this thing's going to be busting out, it's going to show up somewhere officially this only exists in a laboratory you see in a petri dish somewhere or a test tube safe 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 and what they've done these twisted uh, so and so's have taken um mice and injected human dna into them so that the ace2 receptors and whatnot are a similar pattern to you uh humans and what they found if you want to kill mice that is that have human genomes in them they killed with the new pangolin strain. Why do they keep picking on pangolins anyway? They're weird looking critters. But I mean, what are the Chinese, what do they got going on with pangolins? Why don't they use something else? But anyway, once that thing's rolling, look out. It's going to get dumb all over again. Except this time, they may actually have a, a poison that really does kill people, and they won't have to resort to say, you know what, the bent, crooked ass needle. Um, the, uh, the, uh, Andrew Bridgen guy over there in, uh, in Great Britain, I mean, he's a, he's a solitary dude. He's, a almost a one of a kind over there. 
and he's he's an MP. He's in their parliament, and he had a, what they called a debate. It wasn't really much of a debate that I could see, but I, all I saw was really the thirty-minute intro on Doctor C's channel. And the issue is, is that these uh, how they call them EDs, and we ain't talking about erectile dysfunctions. These EDs are still going and going and going. And he made a good point in in his intro with it. Look, after these EDs uh, back of 2020 and 2021 that should have dropped back down. It didn't drop down, it kept going up. But the thing that is spooky here is, and you would know this if you've been paying attention at all, the EDs aren't old folks. They aren't people with respiratory ailments necessarily or you know, chronic diabetes or liver failure or something like that. Young, vital, healthy people, 15 to 45. They're peeling over dead with heart attacks. That's the new normal. That's what they want you to think. And anyone with a brain between here and here knows what's causing it. And yet, the vast majority, I think there was 20 members of British Parliament there, there that sit in and listen to Andrew Bridget. 20. A small, small fraction. Where are the rest of them? And by the way, uh, Dr. C said that uh, uh, Mr. Bridgen uh, was, uh, so I would say, invited. He was being bribed to, hey, why don't you just forget about that little hokey pokey, you know, presentation thing and come on over to Davos with us. You'll have a good time. We, have, we know how to party over here. They wanted him to go to the Davos meeting instead of doing his presentation. They were trying to buy him off. They are trying to bribe him. If they can't bribe you, they'll threaten you. If that don't work, they'll hurt you. If that don't work, they'll kill you. Th these people are brutal. They're worse than the mafia. In fact, the mafia is downright civilized by comparison. And so, you know, what we're looking at is, is just going to get real weird. So you keep your chin up. You know, the, the winner of the race uh, is the one who has authored it. That would be the king of Jews, Jesus of Nazareth. He's... He has the victory, and, and he has a new life for you. He has a new beginning. And, you know, the old way, the old me, the old Mike, everything I do, well, it, it's never really going to be good enough if the standard is perfection. Let's face it. In fact, it's going the wrong way most of the time. <laughs> but he makes all the difference, and he gives you a new identity as a son or a daughter or a friend of God. He gives you a new identity as, as a, an alien and a stranger who's been made one of the family. And so the hope is before us. Don't you let go of your hope. He has broken out of the tomb. He is standing victorious and actually he's seated currently at the Father's right hand. On high, on high, the highest elevation, God Almighty. Guess what? There's one of us there. One of the local boys, a, a human being is there going to bat for people like you and me. He takes our crummy prayers and knocks the rough edges off and perfects them for the Father so that we have access, not based on my so-called goodness. <laughs> oh, boy, that'd be depressing. No, we have access built upon the rock most certain, his loyalty, his obedience, his fulfillment of the oath and the covenant, his perfection in word and deed. That's what it's going to take because the standard is perfection. Anything else like less than that, you're done. And judgment's coming, baby. Judgment is going to hit hard. And when judgment comes from on high, there's, there'll be no escaping it. And there'll be no doubt in it. Every eye shall see and every person on this planet will be very, very aware of what's going on. You can't fool God very long. In fact, you can't fool him at all. You can fool his people for a while. But what's going to happen here with uh, with the, the judgment motif is, is that somehow or another, the the wicked ones who are now currently have power, they're not going to be thrown down. They're not going to be judged. They're not going to be sent to prison. They're not going to be hung by the neck till dead. They're, nothing's going to happen to them, except they'll make more millions and millions of dollars. And, you know, have more little TV uh, bites to, to chew on your ear with. Nah, you don't want any part of that. Stay free on the inside. And the only way to stay free is to be free of sin. That's our problem. It isn't political necessarily. Political uh, bondage is a byproduct of a spiritual condition. 
And that spiritual condition is called darkness. He's the light. He's the light of the world. He's the light of life. And he's in you if you call him. And he'll never leave you alone. He'll never, never walk away from you. Why? He's that good and even better. So don't give up hope. Keep on trucking. And even when you're tired and you're hurt and your tooth is killing you, keep on rocking. He has the victory. Go out and do something good tomorrow morning. I'm thinking maybe breakfast. <laughs> you guys have a good day, and I'm so glad you came to visit. Visit again with me sometime, and, and leave a comment, and, and, you know, anything you'd like. You're welcome here. You have a good night. Bye-bye.